Very good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. I want to show you a little bit about where we've been so far and where we're potentially going as we move towards the early portion of the winter 2023-24. Um, before we get into the video, be sure to like, share and subscribe. There is so much content uh, getting put out here on the channel. Very exciting times to come. Of course, you know that the winter forecast will be released on Thursday, the 30th of November. So be sure to uh, subscribe and stay tuned if you haven't already done so. Uh, plenty of warmth across the world. We did see, according to a lot of uh, sources now, start to show that the, the, um, the global average temperature reached uh, over 2 Celsius above the average for the first time in recorded history. So, of course, there is a lot of uh, attention being uh, drawn to the fact that the planet is as warm as it's ever been in recorded history. Uh, you can let me know in the comments section below what you think of that. And, of course, you know my stance with regards to global warming and climate change. But uh, there is no denying that there is plenty of warmth across the planet. What's interesting, however, is the fact that the uh, Antarctica, yeah, uh, during the course of their winter season, it was record low levels. But the uh, you know Antarctic uh, sea ice at the moment um, is uh, is not record breaking. I believe I could be mistaken. Again, let me know in the comment section below if I am uh, hands down wrong. But certainly, it doesn't look as if um, it is melting away to nothing. But more interestingly, actually, is the Arctic sea ice. I believe it's 15th lowest on record, which I think given uh, the amount of warmth over not just the uh, ocean, but also the land areas, uh, given the fact that it is as warm as it is at the moment, it's interesting that the Arctic sea ice is only 15th lowest on record. I just find that's quite an interesting correlation. You would have actually thought it would have been um, you know, exceptionally low given the amount of warmth um, in the system at the moment here. So uh, some interesting things going on. There, there There's uh, certainly no question about that. Uh, and you can see uh, the month to date so far, as of Tuesday the 21st of November, we've got a lot of areas of warm uh, versus there is areas of cool. Now, the big standout actually in terms of cool is Scandinavia. You notice here that really does stick out like a sore thumb in uh, an otherwise sea of warmth let's have a look at europe in 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 better detail here so there's scandinavia very very cold compared to average especially across uh, central and northern areas of norway and sweden in particular here there is a continent mainly of warmth notice scotland stand out um, below average as well and if you look at this tweet here by mika rantanen that over the last month and a half clearly indicates a southward displaced storm track. Of course, you've got that positive, quite a strong positive at that, to the north of Europe, and that has been forcing the storm track further south. And that has also had an impact on the North Atlantic sea surface temperatures. We've cooled significantly the North Atlantic, and therefore we have got that tripole of warm to the north, cold, and then um, further south we've got warmer than average sea surface temperature so it'll be interesting to see what response that has in the atmosphere as we move into the winter season but of course there is no question about it uh, October particularly further north over the UK super wet it has been exceptionally wet now across more southern areas of the UK in the northern France and this has likely been the deliverer of uh, some very cold conditions as you can see here across Scandinavia for the month of November so far now, as I've said, let's have a look and see what's going on as we move forward here. What's interesting is looking at the um, the, the the polar vortex. So we've not looked at that in the last wee while, but the, there is some interesting things showing up here on the GFS. Now, this is the latest operational of the GFS, and you can see here that we've got, at the moment, a rather robust polar vortex here. Nothing weak about that. It's quite well organized. It's not overly far off its axis as well. But what I'm going to show you here is the latest run of the GFS indicating that warming taking place over Siberia. Now, as we continue to play through the loop, you notice here that we start to cool this region of the polar vortex over Svalbard, extending down towards Iceland and even towards northern portions of Europe here at the moment. 
Now, this here, folks, looking at on the face of it, would actually support more colder conditions for North America. We we'll tend to find that when you start to see a polar vortex cooling uh, and leaning its coldest core towards the area between Greenland and Scandinavia and up towards the European uh, side of the Arctic, you tend to find a correlation to more of a positive North Atlantic oscillation here and Arctic oscillation to an extent as well. But what this tends to do is we start to see higher pressure over the North Pacific extend up towards the Aleutians. That then in turn allows a bit of a cross polar flow, uh, drawing some colder over eastern portions of Russia, across the top and into North America. But what happens in turn tends to find that you've got digs of colder air getting descended into the United States, of course. We've got that increase in thermal gradient between the, the tropics uh, down towards the Caribbean, Central America. We've got warmer here as that colder uh, moves south. And this is exactly what we've seen a few weeks ago with that powerhouse jet stream across the Atlantic. Of course, that led to aircraft traveling from North America to Europe in, in excess of 700 miles per hour. We may see that coming back as we move into the early portions of winter here so of course we know that there's a cold spell coming exactly how far west that area of high pressure gets oh, to the west of the uk and ireland will dictate how much of an open door that cold air will have but it's interesting nonetheless that we are seeing this uh, orientation if you will of the cold uh, within the, the polar stratosphere uh, descend into this region of the world like i said folks that tends to lead to a stronger trough to the north higher heights across the azores the canaries etc etc and a firmly westerly atlantic driven pattern now you could argue that that's shades of 2015 december 2015 to be exact who knows but look at where the Manjulian oscillation is going. It's heading towards the maritime continent, which is a little bit counterintuitive of the situation that we have with the El Nino at the moment here. So let's have a look and see. This is not very clear. I apologize for that. In fact, let's see if I can try and blow this up a little bit so that you can see it. Yeah, that's better. So you can see here that the Manjulian oscillation recently has been hovering around phases eight and one, likely enhancing the more further displaced jet stream, hence why we've had some super wet conditions across parts of France into the southern half of the UK here. And what that has happened is likely that's fueled a stronger jet stream further south, but remember how warm the North Atlantic is, so that's been picking up, drawing more moisture than probably what otherwise would be expected for this region of the world and been driving that moisture, enhanced moisture at that into the southwestern and western portions of Europe here. But if that man Julian oscillation heads in through out of phases one, through phases two and three, which is the Indian Ocean, and then starts to rotate into phases four and five, that would then argue for, for this correlation here with the polar vortex and of course the warming taking place out of Siberia towards the pole, drives Arctic air south, enhances the strength of the jet stream. Of course, you've got that cold air gathering across our side of the Arctic. So therefore you would increase lower heights uh, over and to the north of the British Isles and then opens the door to westerly winds. So a milder overall theme looks to be the case when you add in what I'm showing you here with the 10 HPA temperatures, also with the Manjulian oscillation rotating in the, in the phases four and five, which tends to be warmer phases for Western portions of Europe and even to an extent the, uh, the, the North America as well here. Now, if we look at this chart here, the Manjulian oscillation rotates initially through phases two, which then correlates to high uh, pressure over iceland linking up with scandinavia and of course that is exactly what we're kind of seeing at the moment here we've got a bit of a scandi uh, high developing with area of high pressure 
to the west of the UK and Ireland here, trying to nose up towards Greenland here. So we do have that whole theme at the moment. But then as that MJO rotates in the phases four and five, that tends to lead to a positive North Atlantic oscillation, mild, unsettled UK winter westerlies. And then even as we move towards uh, phase five, if we get there, high pressure over the UK and Ireland here. So what essentially we're saying here is that it looks as if there is a milder theme starting to show up both in the Manjulian oscillation and the art of the polar vortex here with the stratospheric polar vortex. What goes on beyond that? Well, we're going to have to look at that in the upcoming December outlook as well as the winter forecast in general. So, yeah, starting to join up the dots here. Of course, we're going to look at the El Nino and the behavior of that. Is it east based? Is it central based? Etc. etc. So let's go further. Let's continue to look at the 10 HPA temperature forecast. And like I said, this is not an ensemble, it is a raw operational. So there's obviously countless runs through the day and there's variation in each run. So we need to take this with a slight pinch of salt. But look at this here Monday, the 4th of December. Still have that core of, of cold air within the stratosphere close to the UK and Ireland. That then, of course, like I said, supports more of a positive NAO and uh, mild conditions coming in off the Atlantic. But look at the amount of warmth that we continue to see. This has been an ongoing thing. ECMWF, other models indicating this strengthening warming from Siberia towards North America. On the face of it, this supports more cold for North America as opposed to Europe. In fact, we could see similar conditions to 2013-14 where we had one system after another that can't be ruled out folks but then if we go further do we eventually start to see more of a sudden stratospheric warming situation taking place that would change the equation but right now this is favoring a mild december if i'm being quite honest with you and remember any kind of real major warming within the stratosphere even if it does favor the uk and ireland it's coming later than christmas new year it's going to be January. It's going to be February. Remember what the long range models have indicated. It has indicated firmer blocking within the high latitudes, including the North Atlantic and Greenland, January, February, in the March here. So looks as if at the moment it's more of a, a back uh, loaded winter. So very interesting times to come, certainly within uh, the stratosphere. Look at the Manjulian oscillation rotating into the, 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 the milder phase. So the enhanced convection moving through indonesia australia we may start to see uh, increased rainfall here we may start to see a bit of a kind of weakening a, an increased weakening of that positive indian ocean dipole and that really then sets the theme for later down the road we've seen a westerly wind burst quite strong over the pacific that may help boost water temperatures over the far east pacific that's another story for another day of course but i'm showing you here the big picture and how that may evolve the pattern as we go forward here. So here is the Arctic Oscillation of the GFS Ensemble. Notice the spread. Some members indicating firmly positive, some members indicating firmly negative, but in the Ensemble mean it's going from neutral to, towards positive, and that would correlate with that uh, Manjulian Oscillation Phase 4 and 5 here. Looking at the North Atlantic Oscillation, very similar to what the GFS, and of course these two tend to be quite closely matched, but look at here, firmly positive, going back towards the neutral line once again. Here's a close-up of Mika's tweet from earlier. Notice the southward display storm track, and therefore you can see the cooling taking place as we had one system after another. Strong jet stream causes upwelling, and there's the temperature drop over the North Atlantic in response to Current sea surface temperatures, you can see the warm to the north cool in between thanks to that storm track and then warmer conditions further south. Finally, upcoming five day, two minute temperature anomalies over Europe. You can see here average to slightly above average across parts of the UK, slightly below further south. And then as we move towards the period of the weekend, there's incoming that cold air. So we are going to see colder conditions over the weekend, possibly into early next week. And, of course, we may start to see the Atlantic liven up once again beyond that here. Looking at the finer details, how cool will it get? Will we see snow? 
coming up in tomorrow's video so stay tuned for that please like share and subscribe and i'll see you again tomorrow with more bye for now